Hey guys, how you doing? It's Brian at Two Indians. I hope you're doing well today. Hey, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I want to show you something that um, is going to make you feel a lot of different things. It's going to make you feel glad that you're alive. It's going to make you feel like you're going to rethink some of the ways that you ride. It'll make you feel happy, a little sad, um, but uh, it may shock you a little bit. But uh, it's something that I've been wanting to show you and I've been delaying and putting off um, for various reasons. But um, if you remember uh, a couple months ago, I participated in the Southeast Iron Butt Tour, which was a ride that was a vehicle to raise money for Operation Homefront, which is a great cause. I suggest you look at it. It's a charity that you can give money to. That's a national organization, but they keep all the money in your area and it helps support men and women from our armed forces. So um, anyway, we were doing this ride in the Southeast Iron Butt Tour, which is a 1,000 mile Iron Butt ride. And I, actually I'll put a link to it right up here up above uh, so you can watch the video that we did on that ride. So we had an accident during the ride. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And, uh, you know, you'd never start out a ride thinking that something bad is going to happen. And to be honest with you, I guess I've been pretty lucky because I've been on quite a few rides and have never really experienced anything to this level. So we've got a bit of a situation. Uh, a couple of bikes just went down in our group. I want to let everybody know going forward that this isn't some kind of like faces of death thing or anything like that where you're going to see something that you wish you hadn't seen. Um, but I think it's something that everybody should see because uh, it gives you things to think about when you're out on your ride. So, uh, you know, this is something like you'd see on Dan Dan the Fireman, you know, um, how people do stupid things and create problems for themselves. but. Uh, I'm not here to point blame at anybody. I'm not here to uh, criticize anybody's riding. I'm not here to do any of that. I just want to give you guys something to think about. So anyway, we were on this ride, and uh, this guy that you see right here, by the way, uh, his name is Chef. That's what we call him, uh, because guess what? He's a chef. His real name is Robert. Great guy. And on this ride, he had a son with him. Uh, we call him G. G actually is the youngest rider to ever complete an iron butt ride, so I think that's pretty cool. This is Grayson. At the end of the day today, he will be the youngest member of the Iron Butt Association, won't you? Yeah! Our but anyway, uh, during the ride, we're on our way through North Carolina. We had gone all the way up uh, to the Virginia border, I believe, and was coming back down I-95 where uh, we had just stopped for gas and uh, in this ride there were multiple groups and we just happened to hook up with one of the groups uh, that left from our Sanford, Florida location and uh, they were in front of us on this section of I-95. Now in this section it was a very narrow area. It was just two lanes on our southbound lane that we were in. And um, you could see these concrete barriers alongside the road. We were in packed in pretty tight. And so there was a group of about eight or ten bikes in front of us, and then we were about eight or ten bikes behind us. And I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go over to the video here that our friend Chef was uh, very fortunate to have been recording because otherwise we would never see what happens here. And uh, it's something that we all need to stop and think about. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of uh, scroll through this video slightly. He's using one of the GoPro 360 cameras so we can see from all different angles. And uh, I'm going to show you what happened. All right. So um, this is one of those 360 cameras, as I was saying. So we can uh, just kind of like pan back and forth here. And uh, I can zoom in and zoom out, zoom out a little bit. And this is what the image looks like. Hang on, let's go all the way out here. So uh, there's Chef and his son, G. And in front of him, uh, pardon the bugs here, in front of him, we see that we've got a, another group. This is the entirely different group that I was telling you about. And there's my buddy, Mike. 
and there's James and there's a guy named Bob and I'm actually behind James back there and there's a couple other dudes, Brun, etc. Um, so uh, what happens here, is, and I'm just going to kind of scroll through this, is we're cruising along here and I want you to notice that here's this guy in a pickup pulling a trailer and like I said before, we've got this concrete barrier right here. So there's like almost no room to go anywhere. And there's a semi up here. And so let me reposition this. So we're cruising along at a pretty good clip here. And now I don't know if you notice, but all of a sudden we see some brake lights come on right there. Okay. And what we come to find out later is that uh, incredible as it sounds, and I know it's very hard to believe, but the truth is, is that there were some ducks that were trying to cross the road up here. And the, um, the cars up in front of this group slammed on their brakes to try to avoid hitting the ducks. Uh, I'm not going to get into, you know, what kind of thought process go through somebody's mind when there's, when you're on a major highway and everybody's going about 70 miles an hour, which is about what we were doing, probably 65 to 70 miles an hour. And you slam on your brakes when there's a, you know, a line of 20 bikes behind you. So anyway, that happens. And uh, let me zoom in a little more if I can here. Nope, I think that's all I got. And um, just keep playing this little boring. You can see that everybody's braking now. Even the people behind the front bike bikes are braking. And now if I were to play this, um, which I'm having difficulty playing this, Full speed but right about now you're hearing tire screech you're hearing um, the cars in front of us collide and then this happens now you see this bike here which is a Honda Goldwing an older model about a 2004 doesn't matter who's riding it um, but he goes off to the side you can see a car up here is kind of turning a little sideways and now this bike starts to go down um, this is the fellow's helmet right here. And can I zoom in a little more? No, I cannot. Um, so you can see he's in a really bad position here next to this truck. Um, the first time I saw this, my heart fell in my head. He goes down. The bike goes sideways. There's a person in front of him that you can see here that is um, trying to avoid hitting the vehicles in front of them. Of course, there's a few other bikes in front of here that we can't see. You see something happening right here. It's just unbelievable, right? Because how close can you be? His bike incredibly gets missed. If his bike gets hit, it's probably going to get drug over the top of him and bad things are going to happen. The important thing is, is that our friend here has fallen directly in front of his bike. And this is the dividing line here, too, of the highway. So he's over the line at this point and um, is in, you know, a bad position. Um, thankfully, the guy in this truck here, and we'll move that forward is already off to the side of the road. Uh, my friend Mike is doing a, a grand job of avoiding everything. Everybody back here is slowing down. Uh, thankfully, we had a lot of warning further in the back. But um, thankfully, this guy is also paying attention in the pickup truck, and he pulls off to the side of the road. So, um, all right, I'll just pause it right here. So uh, I just wanted to show you that, and I wanted you to take an opportunity to kind of think about a couple of things about that. And I am not as good as Dan Dan the fireman, and I'm not going to sit here and break down all the technicals and things like that. I don't believe that Honda has ABS brakes. It's a 2004 is what it was, the Honda Goldwing. And if I'm wrong, don't flame me down below, but um, I, I think that's one of the reasons why he lost control. I may be wrong. I think we all just kind of think about when you're riding in a group like that, how do you position yourself? Take the opportunity to 
maybe go single file and get away from a truck like that because if something does happen you know how we always talk about you need to leave yourself an out and have an escape path and things like that sometimes you just can't do it you may think you have one but clearly in that situation our friend riding the gold wing did not really have an escape path it just man i'm telling you it happened so fast I feel grateful that I was paying attention and that everybody around, mostly everybody was paying attention. It's just, you know, you can only stop so fast and do so much, right? That's why they're called accidents, I guess. Um, so think about, you know, how you position yourself on your bike, uh, you know, with traffic flow, things like that. I know a lot of guys that say they won't ride next to any kind of semi because they've had tires explode right next to them and things like that. But um, needless to say, our friend on the Gold Wing is a very lucky man. He escaped with some minor injuries. He did get transported to the hospital. Uh, he did have some broken bones and things like that, but he was wearing a helmet. I know his head hit the ground pretty hard because there were some scratches on his helmet. But um, uh, I, I think he had a problem with his, his leg was broken in a couple places too. But um, just be careful out there, guys. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have to wear a helmet or you should wear a helmet. Um, there are times that I don't, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. Um, but I think clearly he's, you know, in good shape today because he was wearing a helmet. Um, I say when he hit the ground, he was probably going about 25 or 30 miles an hour. Uh, you know, if you look at the scrape marks that the bike left on the ground, um, you can see that, you know, it slid a pretty good distance. So anyway, be safe out there, guys. I care about all of you. Um, I care about the people that I ride with. I care about you and the people that you ride with. And I want you all to be safe. And I want you all to get home to the people that love you. And I know that they want you to get home too. So anyway, that's it, man. Just, just a little... I hope you guys are safe. That's it. All right, thanks for watching. Two Indians.